Let's begin with number one, okay. and we just forecasted it here. We do believe, I do believe, that Kyler Murray goes number one overall to the Arizona Cardinals. I am not overthinking this anymore. I'll be your we'll Vanna figure White. Out, that's right. Thank gotcha. you very much yep. for that, Todd, who is the master of the touchscreen. We will figure out the Josh Rosen part of this equation after, but for now, they have what they believe is their franchise quarterback, the most dynamic quarterback in this year's draft, the guy who height is the question mark. But beyond that, he basically checks off every single box. Todd, I think Mel has been saying at previous points of the draft, and I think you sort of feel at least somewhat in the same ballpark, that if he was six foot one, he would be the no doubt about it, number one overall player in this year's class. I agree, and I, I think the, the position is changing, and I don't think size is, is nearly what it used to be in terms of importance in the scouting. Also, go back and look at high school. He, if you talk to every coach, throughout the, the process going to colleges this year. He's the best Texas high school football player that anyone has ever recruited. I mean, think about that. He never lost a game in Texas as a, a big-time Texas football player. Like so this guy, I know only one, one year, 14 starts, but he's been, he's been a star for a long time. You know, I remember Mel Kuyper told me on Mike and Mike years ago, I asked him if Russell Wilson had been six foot three, where would he have been drafted? Because he came out the same year as First Andrew time. Luck and the same year as Robert Griffin III. He said he would have competed with those guys to be the number, even with Luck, right. to be the number one pick in the draft. Agreed. He's now the highest paid player in National Football League history. So I think the perception of height has changed. Wilson obviously has rewritten a little bit of that. Murray is going to go number one. I agree with you. All right. That leaves us at number two. Who goes number two? Yeah, let's stick with the obvious here. Let's go to defensive line. Let's find Nick Bosa, the number one player in this year's class, according to Todd and many people who have evaluated this class in great detail and depth. Obviously, he did not play for much of the season after a core injury against TCU. He's got great pedigree. His father, a first-round pick. His brother, a first-round pick. And he feels the biggest need by far the 49ers have. Here's the part of this I find interesting, Todd, is that he chose to sit out a lot of this season when many people believe he could have played. Not just a quote-unquote meaningless bowl game, but a lot of games before that. The NFL, by taking him number two, is showing they don't care about that no. at all, right? They don't care. They don't care. <clears throat> Which could mean we'll see a lot more players doing it into the future. You could, and it's we don't want to see it for college football. But I also think Nick Bose, there was a lot of uncertainty with that core injury. He had surgery. He had a long rehab. And he also showed, too, let's not forget, everyone looks at it. Like, Rashawn Gary didn't have as many sacks in nine games played as he did four in three games played. So the production was there. It's just – you know, small sample size this past season. Right, but a spectacular player. Yeah. No one disputes exactly. he's the best defensive player in this draft. Who's number three? Your Jets are very happy because they get a player in Quinnen Williams out of Alabama who some believe could be the best player in this entire class. Yep. He's a young, ascending star, a one-year starter. He wasn't even necessarily the leader of this defensive line in Alabama until he really started producing at a high level this season. He could be a nose tackle, but he's going to make quarterbacks unhappy every single time. And I'm happens. told that if Arizona does not go Kyler Murray, if this is all a big smoke screen, that Quinn and Williams would be the pick over Bosa at number one for, for the Arizona Cardinals. The only question I have, we had Quinn in our studio last week. He's a terrific kid. He's obviously a great player. That is the one area where the Jets do have a player. They have Leonard right. Williams, right. who is one of their three or four best players. It's a players. tough call, man, because Josh Allen fits the need, the edge rushing. But – Quinn and Williams is a better football player. Too good to pass up right. on. All right, yeah. quickly, who's number four? Number four, Ed Oliver, out of the University of Houston, a guy who's from the Houston area, stayed home, dominated when he played on the field, had sort of an interesting final year uh, with the Cougars here, but he dominated at the Combine. His pro day was unbelievable. People who went down there and saw him were marveling at just how rare of an athlete this guy is. A little bit undersized for a defensive tackle, but this guy can get to the quarterback. Not system. used properly at Houston. Yep. He was a nose tackle where you had a guard – and a guard on both sides. You can double-team him at all times. If you use him as a three technique, War think Warren Sapp, Aaron Donald. I'm not saying he's that guy, but – Outside the shoulder of the guard, get up the field, penetrate. He's special, and I think he's got a chance to be more productive as a pass rusher in the NFL than he was in college. I will have to see John Gruden take a defensive tackle number four overall to believe it. I, I'm not suggesting you're wrong. I'm saying I have to see it to believe that John is not going to find a way to get a quarterback somewhere in this draft. Who's number five? Well, they got two more first-round picks, which is good news. When Quan Alexander departed them for agency, my first thought was Devin White out of LSU goes to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So let's go with Devin White, a guy who won all kinds of awards during. His time there. LSU always finds a way to produce good players and maybe not necessarily the ideal height, but this is a guy who can fly around. Todd can tell you all about the playmaking ability here. A guy who was the heartbeat of that LSU defense and an obvious fit for what Tampa Bay needs. And I think this is where it gets interesting because now the Giants, and we'll get to it in a little bit, I, I understand, but the Giants are looking at this board. Is there a guy here that's so good that you're going to pass up on a quarterback? You know, you've got, you're, you're staring at 
Dwayne Haskins right here is an opportunity versus some of these other players. A really good tight end, really good edge rusher. I think Dave Gettleman would go with the edge rusher here, but we'll, we'll get to the Giants in a little bit. That leaves us with the Giants field. Where do you have them going? And quarterback could be a possibility here, Greeny, as Josh, uh, excuse me, as Todd just discussed. But Josh Allen is the guy that I am going with. Josh Allen, I think the most improved player in college football this past season had incredible production for a really good Kentucky defense. And Todd, also very good during the pre-draft process. Not a lot of holes to poke in this guy's game. No, I went from seven sacks two years in a row to 17 this past year leading the SEC. He learned how to use his hands as a pass rusher. And in addition to the pass rushing, you get a guy that actually can drop and cover and can be that classic 3-4 outside linebacker that you're looking for in the Giants' versatile scheme in terms of their base front. Can I ask a quick question that I'm imagining a lot of fans at home are asking? I, I feel like I've continuously heard this guy being described as maybe the best player in this draft at a position that is a premium, rushing the quarterback yep. so well. Would it be a, something of a surprise if he's still sitting there at number six? Slightly, but, I mean, look at the players that went ahead of him. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it's just such a strong group. This is what we've been talking this about. This is the one that would surprise me. I feel like Ed Oliver is a name that I saw in the late teens as recently as mm. two weeks ago. And I think is. As teams have gotten closer and, and really delved into it, I think as coaches have gotten involved in the process and looked at his numbers and looked at his athleticism, they say, you know what, if we use him differently, Ed Oliver's got a chance to be one of the special three techniques in this, okay. in this league. I'm sorry I sidetracked no, you. Go you're, ahead. Move you're you're correct, Greeny, by again. the way. There was a time where it felt like Ed Oliver was sliding just a little bit, but his pro day was special. That guy dominated All there. Right.